What is 8K? What does it all really mean? Well, for the pixel peepers out there, 8K equates to about 35 million pixels. Yes, that's high-end stills camera territory. Technically, this sensor is twice as many pixels as a 6K, so of course the images are going to be amazing. What I can see straight up is richer, cleaner, smoother blacks, deep rich colours and far more creamier tones. But overall, way less noise when pushing into the higher ISOs. I push into the blacks like never before, so that's the real standout for me. When the Helium 8K turned up, I thought I'd instantly throw it in the helicopter. Chase some cars, fly through some cities, mountains, blow up some shit. Then I thought, hang on, we've been here before. We've been there, we've done that. What is this camera's point of difference compared to the others? I decided to shoot things that have always tripped me up. Like filming in the dark with little to no light, mixed lighting and overexposing. I just decided to push hard, just push past its limits and just see where we ended up. Okay, for the curious mind, here's a no bullshit comparison between 6K and 8K at 2000 ISO. This is the bit that made me say wow, and to be honest, it's the part that pretty much sold me. Skin tones have always been a contentious argument. I personally have never had the problem. Maybe because I stay in RAW right to the very end. I don't transcode to any other colour bait codecs using weird RGB LUTs, unless I've colour balanced my original file first. I'm not concerned at all about what Kelvin or tint I set on set, as I'm going to throw all that on-set colour data away when I hit the colouring suite later. I stay in raw R3D land as long as I can before I master out my vision. If I have to work in EXR, DPX or TIFF, I make sure I colour and gamma balance my images perfectly before it gets transcoded into another codec. If you're leaving the flexible world of RAW and having to work in a colour-baked world, it's essential you colour correct first before doing so. This makes it so much easier for the colourist or the compositor to start from a perfect base than trying to rip yellow, green or blue cast out of a colour-baked image. Also, a lot of people keep forgetting that skin can pick up reflections far more than you think. The translucent, reflective nature of skin is made up of water. Someone's bright t-shirt who's standing too close, or chroma key screen bounce, or coloured walls or ceilings, or mixed lighting, a light with incorrect colour temperature sneaking into the scene can cause skin colour poisoning. Cheap lenses with shit coatings, cheap filters, UV filters, polarisers could all cause abnormal colour tones upon the skin. I've always made sure to watch for these when shooting the human face and have never had issues with skin tone. But rest assured, the red sensor has never been the problem. It's the mountain of other things between the object and the sensor you have to be concerned about. And that's why the old master DOPs out there are worth their weight in gold, as 35mm negative was a colour-baked medium, and they had to make sure all that colour poisoning was eliminated before they rolled. It's a discipline that's been forgotten, and it's easy to blame the tools. So the secret is really, make sure everything's right before you press roll. Is the AK image sharper? Yes, no, maybe, I can't tell. The whole sharpness thing all depends on the lenses you use, as I tend to select glass that suits the project's look that I'm after. Lenses can dictate thousands of different image characteristics. When you see something a bit weird, or the colour is a bit off, or the image has a smear, or, or you have chromatic aberration, or this big netting, most people tend to blame the sensor, but 99% of the time it's the lens that's dictating what you're seeing on the screen. The sensors now are getting so good that they're starting to show up all imperfections, but those imperfections are the charm. Those imperfections are what people love. At the end of the day, this 8K sensor is, is amazing. It's going to capture what you throw at it. If you want to throw soft, blurry, anamorphic milk bottles at it, or a very precise technical lens, it's completely your decision. But the sensor can handle it. I'm one of those directors who constantly shoots around the world in all sorts of ugly conditions. So I need a camera that ticks a lot of boxes. But being open, I really don't care what logo is on the side of it or how many pixels it has. But that camera I end up choosing has to tick some serious boxes before I end up taking it on set. Size, weight, dynamic range, high speed frame rates, a laptop capable raw workflow, and of course, reliability. Everyone with a 5K or 6K camera right now is probably freaking out, but don't. I've got quite a few 6K dragons sitting in boxes that will see battle for many years yet. I have no problem using them. As back-to-back -back shooting in normal lighting conditions, you have to be pretty good to see the difference, even projected on a 4K screen. But in saying that, you can push so much harder with the new 8K sensor, where you would pretty much give up on the 6K. So yes, the 8K is way better. Has RED made the perfect camera? I want to say no, but nobody has. 
I want cameras to turn on instantly. I want 10,000 frames per second. I want ISOs out to a million ASA. And I want 25, 30 stops of dynamic range. But the reality is those things are unachievable with current technology. So knowing that technology can't give me my perfect camera, the red 8K Helium compared to other cameras in the marketplace ticks the most boxes. And now that it shoots a huge 35 million pixel image, I also get to supply photographic images for my clients, big enough to do posters and billboards at the same time as shooting motion. I mean, it's sort of crazy, I could never even dream of that stuff in the early days. The 8K Helium is without a doubt my camera of choice. Well, until Red bring out a 12K version, that is. But remember this, content will always be king, but having great tools helps you deliver great content. Have a nice day.